Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com and today we're going to be asking the question, can we use an Insta360, which is a 360 camera, for professional serious filmmaking? Because I know a lot of you guys probably think of a 360 camera and you think, okay, it's kind of a gimmick, it's kind of a toy, it's for vlogging and being able to see 360 degrees. Because let's be honest, all right, a 360 action camera is never going to look exactly like a DSLR. It has a much smaller smaller sensor, not much depth of field, and doesn't handle low light really well. But that doesn't mean you can't use it in your everyday filmmaking, and that's what we want to talk about today. So in this video, I want to share with you guys how to use the Insta360, how to set it up, the best settings to use, the best movements to use, and more importantly, exactly how we would use it in our daily shoots. Now, Insta360 has sent us their new RS Dual 1 inch 360 camera to ask that exact same question. Now, if you don't know anything about a 360 camera, what it is, is it basically can see 360 degrees. So as I'm holding it up like this, I can literally see in all directions and I can change in any direction I want to see. So I can look at myself, I can look at Matt, I can look over there, I can look up, I can look down. I can look anywhere I want to because it can see in 360 degrees. So the real draw of a 360 degree camera is that you don't really have to worry about where it's pointed because it can capture in all directions. So I have this shot here of me walking down this wall with the 360 camera and yeah, it's a 360 degree image and you can basically look in all directions. But if we take it into the editor and make it a 16 by nine image, now we have complete creative control to do whatever we want to do with this image image. We can literally start and move from right to left. We can be pointing down and looking up, or we could do like kind of a corkscrew effect. There's so many different things you can do because the creativity, what you can do with after you film is limitless. You can basically do anything that you want to. And that's what we want to do today is to take this 360 camera and be able to crop into a 16 by nine and use it for our everyday filmmaking. So when it comes to the settings, there isn't a whole lot that you really need to do to start filming. I would definitely suggest turning the sharpness to low. It starts off really, really high and it looks almost fake. Keep the colors at vivid. I know that you typically would want to shoot in log, but with this camera and the bit depth that it has, shooting in log doesn't really work that well. So shoot in vivid to just get those bright colors and you don't have to do much editing in post. After that, you want to make sure that you set your exposure and lock it before you start filming. Nothing should be in auto, no auto white balance, no auto shutter speed, no auto ISO. Set it 100% and then you can start filming with it. So they have this little tiny screen on here and what you typically do if you're gonna be filming is to change the settings, you would literally just come in here and manually change the shutter speed and the ISO. And there's no exposure meter bar, so basically what I would do is I kind of point in the direction I know I'm gonna be filming, like something like that. And then I can come in here and fine tune the settings and then click record. They also have an app, Hello app, where you can preview what you're gonna be seeing. And so if you pull your phone up, you can click this M button and then you can dial in the settings a little bit more. So this allows you to have a bigger screen to be able to see kind of what it's gonna be looking like. And then you can click record and you can start filming. I also discovered that it's better to underexpose than to overexpose with this camera. If you have anything overexposed, it's really difficult to bring that down in post. So if I had the choice, I would underexpose instead of overexposing. Now, of course, you can just hold the camera or they have a standard selfie stick that extends a little ways, but getting the extended selfie stick is, I would say, essential for using this for professional film shoots. It really does make a huge, huge difference. You can start really high and go low. You can do all these really cool motions by getting that extended selfie stick. The movements we have found work the best would be extending the selfie stick as high as you can possibly get it, and then moving up or down or left to right. When you're just holding a 360 camera at eye level, it just looks like a regular action camera like a GoPro. But starting really low and then moving the camera upward takes it to a whole new level. I used the extended selfie stick for like 95% of my shots. Also, any sort of unique movements or places where you can like move the 360 camera through something. We just filmed a shot where Matt was sleeping in a hammock and then I pull the camera through this metal opening and then rise up to reveal the sign. Getting unique shots that you wouldn't typically see is so easy with this camera. You can even fake a drone shot super easily by just holding the camera as high as you can. 
So the internal stabilization takes out all those jittery movements, but if you're just bouncing up and down, that's not gonna help. So be sure to walk very carefully, or if you have a one wheel or something like that, definitely use it to get those buttery smooth shots. So one thing I love about the Insta360 is it's so discreet. So you can literally walk into a place like this and nobody will know what you're doing because it's like, you know, the size of your phone. So nobody knows that you're filming anything. And if there's no filming laws, it doesn't matter because nobody knows what you're doing. In a serious note, if you're not using the giant thousand foot selfie stick, it actually is very discreet and you can use it in places where maybe you're not allowed to, setting it on a table or just getting a real quick shot. That's our train. So because the Insta360 can see in all directions, I can actually take this scooter and ride around the city and literally just have it on my back like this. And in the editing, I might be able to like get some really cool shots and I don't even know what's happening. I'm literally just driving and able to record in all directions. So we're gonna try that and see how it works. All right, so the Insta360 is not waterproof, but it is water resistant. So you can get it close to water and it'll be okay. The only thing you have to make sure of is because the field of view is so wide and there's no depth of field, if you do get water droplets on the lens, they will be visible. So you have to just be aware of that. So you can get it close to water. I wouldn't submerge it in water, but you do have to be aware of water drops. So with typical DSLR cameras, uh, overcast days are the best because it gives that even lighting. With the Insta360, it actually does the best in like really bright environments and in direct sunlight. Also like colorful areas like graffiti or murals or things like that. If it's overcast, it looks really bland and it doesn't work as well. So you actually would do better with the 360 to shoot in direct sunlight or with the sun at your back and to have colorful environments, it makes a huge difference. So definitely look around for those kind of areas whenever you're filming with one. Now, this camera shoots in 6K. So you might be asking yourself, well, if that's the case, then won't it pair really well with my 4K mirrorless camera? And that's the one problem that the Insta360 has is that it does shoot in 6K, but the 6K image is a 360 degree image. So essentially this is 6K. But if you're gonna be cropping into a 16 by nine like we talked about, you're essentially cropping into more of a 1080p image, which also begs the question, if that's the case, then what type of shots are best for using this camera? Now, this goes without saying that if you're making a vlog like this right here or using it as an action camera, maybe making a really cool and stylized video, it works fantastic. I actually have a friend of mine who did this exact same thing. He used the Insta360 to make a stylized travel video. But for us filmmakers who want to incorporate this camera into our everyday shoots, it is possible, but I would say it works best with specific shots. The shots that I have found this camera excels at are establishing shots, maybe if you're establishing some sort of location, fake drone shots, if you don't have a drone, you could easily fake one, crane or jib shots like we talked about with the extended selfie stick, unique perspective shots where a typical camera would not be able to do moves like this, and one of my personal favorite, hyper energetic action shots, shots where you can get the camera really close to the action and be able to move around freely. I mean, I would totally use this camera if someone hired me to make some sort of promo for a basketball team. I would use my mirrorless camera to get the close-up detail shots, but whenever the action starts, I would switch to my Insta360 and be able to get those really, really cool shots that you wouldn't be able to typically get with your mirrorless DSLR. And editing 360 footage is actually really simple thanks to Insta360's studio software. Because if you put a 360 video into Premiere Pro, it's not gonna have any idea what to do with it. So we're gonna use the 360 software and then export the videos that we can then import into Premiere Pro. So once we have our video, we can click play and we can literally just look around in any direction to see 360 degrees. Now the thing that makes this studio awesome is the key framing. So with this shot here, if we want it to start looking at Matt and then at the end we show the sign and we want it to look like this, what we simply do is we find the beginning of the shot and we add a keyframe. 
Now, once you click keyframe, all of these parameters will come up like roll angle and you can do this sort of tilting and you can change this and that and you all this kind of stuff. And they even have presets like crystal ball or tiny planet. And what we're going to be doing is making a 16 by nine image. And so they have a natural view, which looks like something like this but I find that this is still a little too extreme. So typically, instead of being at zero, which is the most flat look, but it can kind of make the images blurry and stretched a little bit. So I typically like to have it about 14 or 15. This does give it a natural 16 by nine look, but it just gives us a little bit more fisheye look and doesn't stretch the image too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our shot. So let's say, right here is where we want it to start. And then we're gonna go to the end of the shot, maybe something like this. And we have our next keyframe. We add that, and then we turn the camera in the direction we wanna go. And now whenever we click play, the keyframes go from that one, and then it shows the sign. And that's basically all you do is simple keyframing. And then we export this camera move. So we click export, we, I like to change the bitrate as high as it can possibly go just to give it the best chance to be the highest quality possible. We make it a 4K image and then we start the export. And then once it has exported that shot, we bring that shot into Premiere Pro. And now inside Premiere Pro, we have the shot with the keyframing exactly like we made it. And now we have our Insta360 footage inside Premiere Pro but they also have a tracking option which i think is actually really valuable now it might not work for every single shot uh, but in this case let's say we're going to follow the basketball so we turn on the deep track and we select the basketball and now we start tracking and so it's going to follow the basketball wherever it goes and so now with this little track we have we have this kind of cool shot of it following the basketball and again, you can keep following the basketball. Maybe it goes in and then it follows it bouncing on the ground. There's many different things that you can do with the tracking. Of course, if you wanted to keyframe it, you could make the keyframe and then just slowly you know, move it around here and there and make more keyframes. But the tracking I have found works really, really well. So guys, in conclusion, I think that the Insta360 is a very unique and powerful tool that I think filmmakers should start taking more advantage of in their everyday projects, not just for vlogging, but to intercut with DSLR footage. Now, does it have issues? Yes. Is it gonna work for every single shot? No. But for those specific shots, establishing a location, hyper energetic action shots, maybe some really cool unique shots that you wouldn't be able to typically get. These kind of shots, the Insta360 60 shines at. And now whenever I'm shooting projects, I actually find myself looking for opportunities and looking for ways to incorporate the 360 camera in some way. Some sort of unique shot I am actually looking for because it is such a unique tool for filmmakers. So if you'd like to learn more about how to get into filmmaking or really any filmmaking subject whatsoever, head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over 1,200 video lessons and over 100 hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine taught by leading professionals in the film industry. With over 25,000 students in over 50 countries, a lifetime membership to our award-winning online film academy is only 97 bucks. So if you're wanting to get into filmmaking, start a filmmaking business, maybe create a short film, a feature film, directing, it doesn't matter. Everything that you need to know is right inside. So I hope this video has helped you guys out and you have learned a lot. Go pick up an Insta360 and start using them in your projects and you will be surprised at how much fun it really is. But the thing that makes this 360 camera so different is the image quality. Is that guy flying? He is. He thinks he has a nice car, but he doesn't. He should see my 2014 Honda Civic. Actually, that is a really nice car. <laughs> He's in a lot of debt, lots of debt. That's all he has is debt.